Con el Evangelio de la Biblia no pues, ¿verdad? Y empecé a escucharlo y, y Dios empezó a mostrarme a su hijo porque esto es revelación. Eh, fue bastante difícil porque yo quería estar en la iglesia, pero a la vez no. Siempre el diablo está ahí queriendo apartarnos. Poco a poco a uno lo ha ido creyendo, ha ido sabiendo que nos tenemos que aferrar al pacto que es creer que Jesús es el Cristo. Cada día aferrarnos y saber que esto es lo que nos mantiene con Dios. Esa conexión directa ya la tenemos con Dios. Antes había un, un por decirlo así, un muro que con nosotros que es el pecado que no nos dejaba estar con Dios. Y ahora eso, el Cristo lo vino a votar. He comprendido algo que, que no había entendido. Creo que el principio más básico que nosotros debemos de tener para poder obedecer a Dios es el morir a uno mismo. Y realmente es ahí donde nosotros debemos de, de, de poder presentarnos delante de Dios y, y accionar y, y que Dios pueda Seguir haciendo esa obra que sin duda una obra que Él ha comenzado, una obra que Él la va a perfeccionar. Con el evangelismo de la Biblia podemos hacerlo. Porque esto es revelación. Me hace pensar, me hace meditar realmente. ¿Qué está haciendo en mi vida? ¿Qué yo estoy poniendo a disposición para Dios? Todo mi ser, todos mis pensamientos, todo lo que tengo porque ya no soy yo. ¿Por qué? Porque Cristo vive en mí corazón ardía cuando lo escuchaban, pero es que en realidad esta fe debe estar bien fundamentada en nosotros, para nosotros hacer la evangelización mundial. Por todo el mundo la hora del Señor está corriendo y, y el Señor va a venir en nuestros días. Con nosotros que es el pecado que no nos dejaba estar con Dios y ahora eso, el Cristo lo vino a votar. Yo tengo que escuchar la voz de Dios, qué es lo que Dios me está diciendo. Que es algo que ha venido a impactar drásticamente, pues. Porque creo que el Señor nos habla todo. Amén. Entiendo. Dios le está dando direcciones a todos los países. Pero si nuestra fe no crece, el mundo nos va a seguir venciendo. Habla de conocerse como entre amigos, como entre hermanos. La familia en Cristo que uno desea tener, ¿verdad? Porque estamos en sintonía. ¿Esa obra quién la hace? ¿Dios o yo? La fe de creer que Jesús es el Cristo. We have to keep on moving. There is still a long ways to go in this vast scenario that God has arranged for us. No matter the distance, just keep on preaching the true gospel. Solo
para lo cual estamos dando la vida, por, eh, hemos eh, conocido y se nos ha revelado ¿verdad? el verdadero evangelio y no podemos vivir para otra cosa, entonces queremos compartirlo con todos los salvadoreños, queremos darles testimonio ¿verdad? del verdadero evangelio que Jesús es el Cristo, trabajar en equipo, eh, equipo para el norte, para el sur, para el este, el oeste, etcétera, y bueno, creo que es lo mismo para todas las naciones. Eh, ya la evangelización mundial es un hecho, es una realidad, esto es imparable, y nos sumamos como salvadoreños, porque nuestra nación es bien pequeña, pero nos sumamos para ir donde Dios nos lleve, ¿verdad? Precisamente con un objetivo, acelerar la venida de nuestro Señor. Lo amamos tanto que amamos su venida y queremos reunirnos con Él. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He who is the faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hello, God bless you, everybody. God bless all of you. Uh, welcome to this youth service. Um, it's such a blessing to be here, to see all of you. And just wait, uh, Pastor Luis, interpretation is okay. So uh, we are going to start this time. Uh, I would like to uh, salute everybody from every country. Welcome. Thank you for being here, for joining uh, this time. I hope it's a blessing for all of you, for all of us. And first, I would like to start by reading uh, a verse. Is John. John chapter 17, verse 3. John chapter 17, verse 3. And it says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So the will of our God is for us to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. And through this service, uh, we're going to pray so that the main goal may be achieved. And the main goal is for us to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. So let us start with a prayer. Thank you, dear Father. Thank you for this time that you allow us to be gathered through this Zoom meeting. Uh, we praise you for all the pastors and all brothers and sisters from all the countries. Uh, we thank you for the people who is joining for the first time and who is going to hear the testimony of the gospel for the first time. We pray that our ears, our hearts may be open to hear your word. We pray that we, we can hear you and be guided by your Holy Spirit to the faith that Jesus is the Christ, that our faith may be strengthened and that this time may be of a blessing for all of us who are gathered here. 
We thank you and we praise your name. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, amen. Amen. So uh, right now we are going to worship time. And our sister, Jimena Rivas from El Salvador, is going to lead this time. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Let's worship the Lord.
understand your gospel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for, for his gospel. Amen. We are going to, to hear now the word of God uh, through the preaching. Uh, and it's going to be uh, led uh, our sister by our sister, Blessed Iris. So, Sir Blessed, you have the time to share with us the word of God. Okay, everyone, um, can you all hear me perfectly fine? Okay, okay, so it's good. Um, I would like to welcome each and everyone first. Welcome everyone to uh, our meeting and I will be the one in charge for the word today. And I'll be sharing the message. Actually, there is no specific title for this preaching. But I was just wondering, and I was just on my thoughts the other day. I, I think I was just on my thoughts for a long time now. And I actually want to share this to you because um, one thing that always interests me is when the disciples lived with Jesus physically for three and a half years, as a matter of fact, they lived for three and a half years and those three and a half years when Jesus asked them, what about you? Who do you say I am? And that's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 to 16. And only one answered. And it got me thinking, how come this only one who answered? And it, this was Peter's confession, right? You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. And this was his confession and only one answered. And Peter, who got the revelation, even Jesus said that, Peter, blessed are you because you got the revelation. But how come someone who had the revelation could deny Jesus three times? 
And I was thinking about this. They denied him. And even the disciples that had lived with Jesus physically for three and a half years, they denied him. They forsook him. But you know what? I was thinking about the life after Jesus got resurrected. The disciples, the moment the Holy Spirit came upon these disciples, when they lived, they lived for Christ. And when they died, they died for Christ. They never left Jesus after that, even though Jesus was not with them physically. And you know what? The whole Holy Spirit is the most important person here on earth today. Jesus even said it himself. If I do not go, he cannot come. And God sent the Holy Spirit so you can know him the same way the disciples know Jesus. The same way the disciples knew Jesus. The Holy Spirit is given to us and you can have the same relationship the disciples had when they were with Jesus. And as a matter of fact, you do not receive the Holy Spirit the moment in, you speak in tongues or the moment you start acting holy or perfect or it came as an upgrade for walking faithfully for so long. No, the Holy Spirit didn't come after you get water baptized. No, he came at the time of your salvation. And every believer, when they get born again, which means when they get born from above, they get the Holy Spirit. And a lot of believers receive the Holy Spirit, but a lot do not walk with the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 6, 6, 16, and it says here, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. And when Jesus said, I will send you another, what does this mean? The same way he lived with the disciple, this another will live with you. And this was what Jesus was talking about here. The Holy Spirit was given to us so that we could have fellowship with him, so that we could walk with him. And he's living with you right now the same way Jesus lived with the disciples. In John 15, verse 26, it says here, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. He will testify about me. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth. And now you are wondering why Paul in the early churches all proclaimed the same gospel. We talked about this in lecture one about the gospel of the Bible, right? What did the, the true gospel, the apostle Paul in the early churches preach? All of if you look at their lives, it's all the same. It's all the same message that this Jesus, he is really the Christ. And you wonder why they all have the same gospel. They all have the same message. Why? Because the Holy Spirit that they received testifies about the Son. And this verse is showing you that. The Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth, testifies about the Son who is the truth, who is the way, and who is the life. And you know what? The same Holy Spirit that Jesus had, the same Holy Spirit that the disciples had, the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that same Holy Spirit is in you. And it's so important to know that same Holy Spirit is in you. You did not get Holy Spirit Junior. No, you did not get Holy Spirit, the, the weaker one. No, you all have the same old Holy Spirit that the same that Jesus had. It is in you as well. The same one. And that is so powerful. The Holy Spirit wants to be to you what the disciples were to Jesus. And we need to realize this because Allah can receive the revelation. Allah can. And they know about the truth. But Allah can they but Allah do not believe. They do not grasp. And it is written in the Bible that the this can only come as a revelation. But in John 20, 31, it is saying that whoever believes. So it's not just simply receiving the revelation. You have to believe. And when you believe, you receive, you receive the Holy Spirit and you walk with the Holy Spirit. And I keep talking about the disciples' life. I keep always and always and always talk about their life. Why? Because I think even when it's a disadvantage for them, they keep proclaiming the, this gospel. And that's so encouraging because in their life, you know what? It's really, really a disadvantage for them. If you get called a Christian, that's a mockery. That's an insult. If you get, if you're a Christian, oh, you're a follower of Christ. You're the follower of the king of the Jews. Oh, no, that's blasphemous. We should kill you. And they were running for their lives. It was a disadvantage for them. Being called a Christian. 
but they keep proclaiming this gospel, this good news. And you can even see it in the Bible that when they proclaim, they proclaim about this Jesus being the Christ. And I keep thinking, how come our faith is so shallow nowadays? The, the reason why we don't evangelize is we're shy. Ah, oh, maybe my friends will hate me now. Oh, I don't know. My friends kind of feel weird when I speak about this. So maybe I'm not going gonna evangelize now ah this country i don't know if i'm kind of shy to go outside i'm really not that type of person to be sharing outside that's a reason now right mostly that's a reason the reason that we have now but during their time they were being killed they were being stoned to death they were being killed all of the things it was not an advantage for them but how come they kept on running and proclaiming about the gospel What's the difference between them and us? And actually we should be in advantage now because we have the scriptures. And now we have the Holy Spirit that testifies about him. But how come? What did they do? What did they receive? What is the church doing right now that is failing? Because the church is responsible for proclaiming the gospel throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, right? And then the end will come. That is in Matthew 24, 14. This is the responsibility that is given to the church. And this is why you and I are here. This is why I am here. This is why you are here. There is still something left that needs to be completed. The world still needs to hear. That is the responsibility of you and I. But how come the early churches, they ran and proclaimed this gospel even when death faced them, but the church now is unable? What is the difference? And I'm pretty sure they were scared as well. And I'm pretty, pretty sure there were times when, when they were sad. And I'm pretty sure they were also dealing with struggles, financial struggles, the same as we do now. It's all the same as we do now. All the struggles that we have now is still the same than what they had. I'm pretty sure there were times where they cried. Actually, their persecutions, wow, it's, it's, I don't know if it's worse or not, but they were persecuted as well. There were times when they were sad, all of the emotions that we're feeling right now, it's the same, but how come it's so different? How come the results are so different? And I'm pretty sure they experience what you're experiencing as well. But you know what? They were so full of the gospel. They could not stop. When they received the revelation, they believed. And when they believed, they received the Holy Spirit. They denied themselves and took up their cross and followed him. They walked with the Holy Spirit. Jesus become, became their righteousness. You don't have to be you don't have to be holy first before you come to God. You get holy because God is the one who who changes you. You know when Jesus called the disciples they didn't Jesus was not like okay first you have to fix your anger issues. Okay first you have to stop being a tax collector. Okay first you have to stop this you have to stop that and then follow me. No. no. He said follow me. He didn't say he didn't mention anything about changing. He didn't mention anything about that. And then what happened after three and a half years? Wow, how come the disciples' life are, is so drastically changed? That's what the Holy Spirit does. You come to him now. Whatever you are, he is calling you as you are now. Christ died for you when we were still in darkness. The same way the disciples were still in darkness during that time. He called them, come follow me. And that's what he is asking for you to do as well. Come follow me. And Jesus become their righteousness. The same way it should be for us. And the Bible says that all our righteous deeds are filthy rags to him. Nothing that we did in the flesh or that they did in the flesh could ever be compared to his righteousness. So now when you deny yourself and you pick up your cross, you deny that you know how to do right. You deny where that you know how to, where to do right. You deny that, you deny what is right without him. So now that we have received this gospel, the same way the disciples, the early church received the gospel, everything that we do now, up to this day now, with the time you received to Christ, everything that we do now is now under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you are a new creature. Now all things pass away. Now all things become new. Now your righteous act is no longer you. It is him. It is his righteousness. Now it is not you anymore. You're not choosing righteousness because you are good. You're not choosing righteousness because you are holy. No, it is now because now he lives within you the same way 
that's why the disciples were acting the way they were acting. That's why the disciples lived the way they lived because their righteousness is of God now. They're not living for themselves now. It's They're living with him. God lives within them now. And they know that God said to go and proclaim the gospel. So they did. And the same way the disciples ran, the same way they proclaimed the gospel, it was not because they were good or they were holy or it, it's because, oh, I just want to do this. No, it was because now they don't live for themselves anymore. It is what Jesus wanted them to do. The same way he wants us to do, go and proclaim the gospel. This gospel that Jesus is truly the Christ and this is what they did because even the father from the old testament to the new testament the father the son and the holy spirit they all proclaim the same thing and what is that same thing if you read the whole bible it is all about the son it is all about jesus being the christ that i will send you this this i will send you this messiah to save you because you cannot save yourself you cannot save yourself i have given you the first covenant and you cannot you didn't even Follow that so the first covenant. You can't keep that. And now I'm sending you the second covenant now. And you don't have to do anything. I will do it for you. From the old and new, everything revolves around Christ. Even the Holy Spirit testifies about this. That's why the Holy Spirit is here to testify about the Son. And even the Father. It's all about him. And so this is what the disciples did. And not only that, why, why did they run and proclaim the gospel? And until death faced them, because Jesus promised his disciples that he would come again. And he is not only for his disciples, it is for us as well. In John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. They believed. They believed that he was coming back because Jesus promised them and they believed that. They believed that he was coming back. They believed his return. So they, they spent their lives proclaiming. They spent their lives by believing that this Jesus who I'm proclaiming to you, this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. This is, this is what the Father had promised us for so many years and he will come again. And they believe that the same way we need to believe that he will surely come back. That's why they lived the way they lived. That's why they were like that. I would like to encourage each and every one of us here. We need to realize this deeper. More and more deeply. Because this is the message of the Bible. And even the Bible is saying about this. And how come it's this is the same message again and again and again and again. We always keep saying Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus, because this is the root. This is what the Bible is why the bible is written and the bible is saying that to you itself it's in john 20 31 that verse is always you always see that verse so that these are written from old testament to new testament so that you may believe that this jesus is the christ and that by believing you may have life and you know that in john 3 16 as well a lot of us favorites verse right that is the reason so that we may have life and who is that life because this is the Christ because you know what Christ's anointing when Jesus was here his anointing is life itself it is life that's why when he went to Lazarus Lazarus literally rose from the dead because that's his anointing it is life and that's what we do not have that's what we don't have and that's what we need and that's why we need him because every sinner needs him and we are all have fallen short from the glory of God So this is it. This is the message of the Bible. And we need to proclaim this gospel until the end and run and proclaim and keep on proclaiming and proclaiming this. And we need to walk with the Holy Spirit and hold on to and grasp onto this gospel and not just proclaim it as it is, but you have to live by this. You have to truly, truly, truly believe this. By believing you deny yourself, 
you deny your own righteousness and let Christ be your righteousness and let Christ flow out of you and everything else will follow. So Jesus is truly, truly the Christ. And even the hell Holy Spirit testifies about this. Even the Father testifies about this. Yes, Maranatha. So that will be all for the special message that I have. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Thank you, Sister Bliss, uh, for blessing us. Did you get the joke? <laughs> Through the word of God. Um, so uh, while I was hearing you, I was remembering the fact that Jesus, as the Christ, has already given us the victory uh, about Satan, about sin. And if we believe this, we are also uh, reconciliated with God again. So I believe that, and the word of God also says that we can rest from our works uh, in this name. So it, it, service and good fruits and a change in my life as you were speaking are no longer like an obligation, but it's something that the Christ already did on the cross. He already paid. And the only thing that he's asking from me is to believe. And as easy as that, we, we as humans and as our, this uh, scene that we inherit from Adam and Eve, we believe that we must do a lot of things to, to, to win something, but the Christ already did it all, and we must believe and receive this. And that is to accept, that is acceptance, is to hold to this and receive it, receive it as a gift, as the grace of God. Amen. And every day continue believing this till his second coming. So thank you for the word. And now we are going to the intercession time with um, our sister Sarah from Canada. So thank you, Sister Sarah. You can open your mic. Thank you. And thank you again, Blessed Green, for that amazing message. That was a great message that we can apply. So I would like to bring up the prayer points that we are going to pray about. Um, so the points that I have is for our school. We're going to pray for our school and for our teachers and for the evangelization of those who are lost because we know that so many people still need to be evangelized to this day and we know that that is a great big mission that we have as followers of the messiah and guidance for the youth today because we know that uh, the youth struggle a lot i know that we face so many trials and temptations today and that we need a lot of prayer for all the youth that are going through all of that stuff. Whether it be at school or in their social circles, they need that prayer for them to stay on the right path. And for our families, that we can keep that nuclear family for those who are going through, through families of separation, of divorce, families with, with problems that they can just have that nuclear family brought back to them. And for those who are in need to break chains of sin, addiction, repetitive sin, even small sin, even though there's no such thing as small sin, <laughs> any sin at all, 
And for the church and followers of Yeshua, I know that Sister Blessed Green had mentioned all the trials and tribulations that Jesus' disciples went through. And even though we're not going through such great trials, all, not all of us are going through such great trials, we're still heading into that time where we will start facing worse and worse trials and tribulations. And it would be great if we could pray about that. So that being said, I guess I will start praying. So, dear Lord, we come to you today. We come to pray for our school and for our teachers. We know that there's a lot of corruption in so many schools right now with the education system. We know that so many kids need support for their learning. We know that so many kids have behavioral problems that are causing trouble in school. And we just pray that you give, you give those kids strength to get through this semester and to get through this year of school to do their best. And we pray that you give strength to the teachers to speak up and to do the right thing, that they do so much and that they have to deal with so much, that they have such a burden to teach so many children, Lord. We know that we as youth, we also have tribulations with the things that are being taught to us in some of the schools, things that go against your word. We pray that you can give us just discernment, that you give us bravery to speak out about it, to give our honest opinion about it, and to shine a light to our peers, to shine a light to our classmates, to shine a light to our friends as well, to our social groups that we have, Lord, that we can be that good influence, Lord, that we won't be afraid of showing our faith, of showing the values that we stand for. Lord, we, play, we pray for the evangelization of those who are lost, those who are in need of you. We know that there are so many people that are in need of you right now. I know for a fact that in Canada, I see so many people on the streets that are in desperate need of something in their life, and that something would be you. Lord, I know there are so many people just hurting right now. Please open a door for them to be guided in the right direction, to be guided by someone who can support them and tell them about the gospel, tell them about the word, know that they are loved by you, God, know that they are loved by so many people, Lord. Help people to just have that humbleness, to go up to others, to speak with humbleness to them and not with reprimandment, Lord. We pray that people can also be honest about the gospel, that even though we have to come in humbleness, that we also don't sugarcoat the gospel, that we tell them what is really true, Lord, that we tell them what you really want to tell them, Lord. Lord, we just pray for us and our mission to evangelize to all those that need evangelization, Lord. And we pray for the guidance of the youth today, the youth that are going through so many trials and tribulations. I know that I, that all of us as youth, we go through so much temptations, whether it be drugs, pornography, hanging out with the wrong friends, Lord. Give us discernment to choose who we hang out with, to choose who are our friends. Let us not be afraid to speak up, to tell them that we cannot do something or that something is wrong. Lord, we pray for discernment to know what is right and wrong. We pray that all the youth may have strength to not fall for such temptations, to not fall for drugs, to not accept what evil is offered to them. And Lord, we pray for those who are going through tough times in their family. We know so many people are going through families that are broken, siblings that have left the family due to drugs, due to a hard heart, due to divorce breaking their family. We know that it hurts the children that are part of that family. We know that the parents are also needing your word to know that 
how much it affects their kids, Lord. We need to bring back a biblical nuclear family, Lord. Help relationships be restored amongst those whose families have been broken. Help your love shine through parents that they may teach their kids in such a way that they can see that, that light in them, that the gospel can be taught to them from a young age, that they can be trained up in the right way, Lord, that they won't stray away from the right path, that they'll be kept on that right path just because of what their parents said. Lord, we also pray for those who need to break chains of sin. I know so many people right now are in this chain of sin that they're keeping secret, that they're not bringing to their parents, that they're not say telling their friends, that they're not telling their, their brothers or sisters in Christ, that they're not telling you, they're not coming forward to you for help. Lord, I just pray that those people will be humble and will come towards you and beg you for help to break those chains whatever the sin is lord we know that no addiction no chain is hard for you to break lord we ask you to just remove all these temptations remove all this being held back by all of this shame we ask you to just let them let go of that shame and to come forward to someone, come forward to a pastor, a youth leader, so that they can get the help that they need. Show them, show them the way. And that they can also just read the word and find comfort in doing so, find the strength in doing so, find a refuge in doing so, Lord because we know that it's so important to do that. And we pray for the church and for the followers of Yeshua, for your followers, Lord. A lot of us take it for granted, the privilege that we have of still having a Bible, of still being able to gather in a church, gather as a group, Lord. We know that so many people around the world don't have that privilege and we are so, we take it for granted, Lord. We pray that those people that don't have that privilege, that you may protect them, that you may just give them strength to never, to never give up, to keep on finding ways to gather to fellowship and to learn about your words. Lord, we just pray that us, as we start facing trials and tribulations, that we won't leave the right path, that we won't back down. Because we know that so many will. But please just give us the strength to know what is right and wrong, to stand up for what is true, to stand up for the word, to stand up for our faith, no matter what the circumstance is, Lord no matter what we face. And Lord, I just give you thanks that we all are here today, that you have just given us the privilege to live another day, that you gave us life and that you gave us this opportunity to share the word, to be in this fellowship with this youth that hungers for you as well, Lord. It's just beautiful to see that. We pray this in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sarah. I praise the Lord for what he is doing in all the nations. And I really, I really thank God for your life, Sister Sarah because you are a youth from Canada uh, and I believe that you are representing all the youth there. So I hope and I pray that 
the gospel of the Bible that Jesus is the Christ may continue spreading to all the Jews and in Canada and to the whole people. Amen. So uh, now we are going to another important time and is uh, the report, the ministry report from uh, Brother Simon Mugina from Uganda. Thank you, uh, brother. God bless you. And the time is yours. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Kathy. I hope you can hear me. Yes. We, we cannot hear yes, you. Yes, Brother, uh, probably yes, if you, uh -huh, you, you take out the camera, uh -huh, so probably connection may get better. Yes, Kathy. I mean, we, we can hear you, but it's a little bit unstable. Yeah, praise the Lord. Wonderful day that God has given us. Um, my name is Mugena Simon from Uganda, and I'm grateful to share the ministry report from Uganda. I just want to share the uh, the PowerPoint with us so that each one of us can be able to see. Uganda has been so great with the invitation to receive the message of who Christ is. And I'm grateful that each one of us has been passionate to share the same message to different individuals. Okay. Okay. I request a brother Louis to share because my gadget has, is not accepting my document to be shared uh, on this platform. So brother Lewis, Lewis, you can share with us. But in Uganda, as for now, since January, we have been able to do different outreaches and mainly our ministry has been going on through different platforms. Mainly we have small group fellowships which have continued to operate in homes, uh, in schools, and also in communities. And also we had gospel seminars, which have been going on in different regions. I will be showing you down uh, in different regions. And also we had one-on-one -on -one sharing that we have been sharing with different individuals whom we approach, especially those whom we work with, those in, in schools, those ones, in our homes, uh, especially those who desire to hear and learn. We also had hospital ministry, whereby most of the individuals would reach the hospital, share the gospel, either in a group or one-on-one, -on -one, and making them know that surely Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, that through him and him alone is where we can find life, and not just life, but life which is internal. We have also had online se gospel seminars every Sunday. And I'm grateful for all those who have been participating and engaging, especially both in Uganda and those in international levels. They have been sharing with us and the youth are growing every day. Uh, when we go to the next slide, this was just a summary of our achievement, but I want us to look at some pictures of what was going place. When we go to the third slide, when we go to the third slide, we look at Brother Simon Mugena sharing the gospel with students in Fort Potro. So universities and tertiary institutions have become a center of our operation. Third slide has become the center of our operation. And therefore, we desire to reach every student with the gospel 
of Christ. Therefore, you know, we have organized trainings, discipleship seminars to see that each one of them grows to the level that they can magnify and also believe that surely Jesus is the Christ. And when we go to the fourth slide, the fourth slide, in the fourth slide, we, we see Pastor Fred Elatu sharing the gospel in Kumi University. This was a, a gospel discipleship seminar, mainly to make Christ be discovered among the university students. And I'm grateful for all the support you gave us towards this conference. And it was so amazing. Not only that, we also had a wonderful gospel seminar in Gulu. It was organized by our brother Hilary and Pastor Bernard, and they were able to share the 12 lectures. The 12 lectures. These were mainly local youth from different churches coming to learn and also share the gospel of Jesus being the Christ. Not only that, we still discovered that the hospital needs the gospel. And our brothers and sisters together with the team from, uh, from Northern, led by brother Patrick Opio, they were able to share in the hospital the gospel of our Lord being Christ. So in the pictures, you see them. Uh, then as we continue in the center that is in Kampala, we have our sister Marion with the discipleship team, whom she was able to share with the gospel, as you can see them posing in the photos and they're smiling because the gospel is so sweet and amazing to us. Other activities were not summarized all here because we cannot talk about all of them. But the online Sunday programs have continued where we meet and share the gospel with both the new and the continuing disciples. And here we look at uh, different individuals sharing. And this year we are able to go through the 27 lectures, which was an reminder to each one of us to hold on and to push on in sharing the gospel, but not only sharing the gospel, but living the gospel out as a believer. So I am grateful for those who were able to attend and also participate in these moments that we had our online Zoom fellowships. However, we have not stopped. We are still planning for more opportunities that God may give us to share the good news of the Lord. And here comes a great conference, which we have called the Timothy Conference 2024. It will run from January. It will run from January 15th to 20th. And this will be a physical conference with disciples from different regions, but within Uganda. That means those ones from Western, those ones from Central, from Northern, Eastern, gathering together in Eastern Uganda in a place called Kumi. And our main activities shall be expository of the teachings of Paul, that is the second Timothy. We shall go through the second Timothy because we believe the content written to Timothy was very important and is still important to us as ministers of the gospel, even in our generation, that if we can hold to that true teaching that Jesus is the Christ, then we shall be able to grow and bring more to him. We shall be sharing the 27 lectures and also not just sharing the 27 lectures, we shall also have an opportunity to reach out and proclaim the gospel that we are learning, to proclaim the life that we are living, that surely Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. So we shall be reaching out to our neighboring communities. I'm grateful about the Timothy conference and for those who can see on the PowerPoint, we have 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. I want to read it because it is a reminder to each one of us. 
that all the things you have heard, all the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. So that is our main target. And in the picture, we have the team from different regions, uh, the coordinators, and also some of the disciples who were learning on how to share the gospel, just posing for the picture. And I'm grateful for each one of them. As we pray and continue to trust God for the conference, we have our daily prayer guide or our prayer for next year. And these are our key prayer points, which we desire that the Lord may be able to help us. One, we pray that God may give us courage and boldness to witness the gospel. We are living in a generation that is decaying every day. And the truth, the truth has been compromised. But just as Paul requested the, the church of Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, that they may pray for him, not just praying for him, that he may be able to get the boldness after they have prayed for him, to share and speak fearlessly the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray that God may give us courage to share the gospel. Number two, we also pray that God may keep us united as the body of Christ. That God may keep us united. I love Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. That always keep yourself united in the Holy Spirit. Bind yourself together with peace. That means there are two things. We have to be one with the Holy Spirit. But not just one with the Holy Spirit, we should be one with each other. And when we are together and the Holy Spirit is working out, then the gospel will spray faster than a burning fire. I love the third one. The third one is the central key of our existence, to raise worthy disciples. Because this is the great commission that Christ left for us. And I love what we just read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. That what we have learned, we are supposed to share with others. And when you read Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 downwards, it says that go into the world and make disciples. And make disciples. It did not just say go and bring people. It said make disciples. So our desire to the Lord is that he may enable us to raise worthy disciples of our generation who will be able to transform lives and also reach out to bring many to believe that surely Jesus is the Christ. So those are our key three prayer points that when we get the courage to preach, the courage to witness, and when we are united together and the Lord helps us together, we shall raise worthy disciples. And I want to go to towards our conclusion, we want to appreciate and thank the entire world evangelization team for their continued support towards the ministry in Uganda, in Africa, and the world at large. May God richly bless you for each of us who has been able to give, to see that the conferences, the seminars, and all our activities in Uganda are going on effectively. We bless the Lord for you. And I also want to appreciate the team from Uganda, the young people who are passionate to share the gospel, to buy data for the online conferences, to share, to move in one place to another, to see that everyone receives the gospel. May God bless you. And we want also to thank those who have been able to pray for us, that you are always on your knees praying for Africa, praying for the youth in Uganda that they may come to the full knowledge of the will of God. And the will of God is that all men may come to believe and know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Above all, we give glory to God for the revelation of the gospel and his faithfulness in raising more worthy disciples. And we believe that next year is not just a year of us sitting down, but it's the year of us standing up 
reaching every door, reaching every heart, and reaching every house with the gospel of the Bible. I am grateful, and my prayer as I conclude is that this gospel may become our lifestyle. That is my slogan, that the gospel we share is not just a gospel for others, but it's a lifestyle that we live. It's a call upon every believer. It is the center of our operation that every life must come to the full submission to God. I pray that we continue to worship him, we continue to bless him and exalt him. And I'm grateful for each one of you and this opportunity that was given to us as Uganda. And uh, I'm also happy that I was chosen among the many to present. I remain Mugena Simon, uh, just on the slopes of Mount Renzori, sharing this because God saved us and it remains the Christ. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Simon, for the report. I I know um, through social media, uh, you are constantly sharing uh, the reports from Uganda. We're constantly watching also uh, lives that you do uh, through Zoom meetings. And I know that God is using your lives to, to save the country of Uganda, but not only the country, but also the continent of Africa and the whole world. Amen. So praise God for your lives and that you may continue believing this gospel till the end. Amen. So now uh, we are going to the uh, last time of this meeting and is the final hour. Uh, well, before that, I would like to, to appreciate and thank all of the participants of today, uh, Sister Jimena from El Salvador uh, for leading the worship time, uh, Sister Bless Iris from Philippines who, who preached us the word of God today, uh, Brother Simon for the ministry report, Sister Sarah for leading the intercession time, and thank you all of the participants who are gathered here in this meeting. Uh, we bless your lives and we hope that we can continue believing that Jesus is the Christ. Now, uh, our Pastor Gladys from Philippines will give uh, some final words and benedictions for everybody. Amen. Gracias, hermana Kati. Thank you also, Pastor Luis. Hallelujah. Really thank the Lord. Thank you, Irish Blessed, for the powerful gospel of the Bible message. And of course, our beloved Pastor Simon for sharing what the world is doing in Uganda. So I just want to encourage everyone. I just want the world to know that Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, 7 says this way, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. But this is the truth. When it comes to the gospel, if you receive this revelation, testifying Jesus is the Christ, you can help yourself but be anxious to really help the world to experience what it meant receiving this revelation. We heard the message just now. How, how important it is that we have the revelation. So therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, now that we know that the Lord gave us the revelation as the solution for the whole world, essential problem, what are we going to do? Let us continue, allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in us, through him, in him and for him, knowing that in the Lord, our labor testifying as witness that Jesus is the Christ is not in vain. It is actually the power of God that will save the entire world. So let us comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace in the gospel of the Bible, and the God of love and peace will be with us so we can finish world in manifestation in our days. Amen. So let us come with a benediction. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us.
in Christ Jesus' name, who is truly the Christ. Amen, 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 amen. Maranatha, everyone. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Gladys. So thank you, everybody, for joining to this wonderful youth meeting, this international service, uh, that we all may continue holding to this faith till the second coming of the Lord. Amen. So we can all open our mics and uh, say goodbye to, to everyone. God bless you. And Maranatha. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Blessed Thank you, Mr. Blessed Green. Thank you, Brother Simon. We love you all, Maranatha. Bendiciones. Bendiciones, Pastor Ángel. Bye. Bendiciones a todos, Maranatha. Bye. Maranata. 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 Maranata.